Hi guys, my name is Chelsea Fields and I'm over at Urban Schools. I am with Kathy Bennett. She is the D Director of Creative Arts and Special Events with the State Fair of Texas. Hi Kathy, I'm so happy you're here with us. Hi, Chelsea. It's good to be here. Yay. So we're going to talk <laughs> lots of stuff about the creative arts section of the State Fair. I think exactly. a lot of people sometimes aren't even aware that this building exists at the fair. Have you this seen that? It's a huge building and it's become more and more popular over the years. I think that I always say we're the most popular building at the fair. Of course I do. Uh, <laughs> so there's a lot going on. We have our pre-fair uh, arts and crafts that we take in and we start decorating our 100 showcases in August. And then as the fair progresses and it opens up, then we have, usually we have our butter sculpture Mm -hmm. in one end and we have our cooking contest in another end and in the middle we have our celebrity chef program so there's a lot going on in our building right so let's talk a bit more about the the pre-fair contest the arts and crafts um you guys just okay. released the new handbook so i've got the old version here this is it right here right. This gives you all of the different categories that you can enter into. And there's just, how many categories are there? Okay, this year we have 15 categories. Okay, we have added three categories. Two of them are permanent now. We have added glue shoe and the great pumpkin challenge, mm -hmm. which normally we have during the fair, but we've added them permanently pre-fair. Oh, we okay. also have this year, the mini butter sculpture that they have to bring in pre-fair, refrigerated in a, a cooler or something. And then the winners are all going to go into our, our refrigerated showcase. With the big butter usually, sculpture. Yeah. This year, we're not going to have that big butter sculpture. So we're counting on the mini butter sculptures to decorate that showcase. Got it. And then within each category, how many... Different uh, subcategories. is different, but all together pre-fair, there's over 900 different uh, uh, classifications, categories for all the different 15 different departments. Wow. So, so there's lots of things you can enter. Lots yeah, of something for enter. everybody. Absolutely. Okay. And who can, who can enter into the fair? Anybody? Uh, Actually, pretty much anybody. Okay, so we have an adult division, obviously. Mm -hmm. We also have a senior citizen age 70 plus. Uh, we have juniors age 13 to 17. And we have children age 12 and younger. And we have also added teachers and professionals into six different departments this year. Awesome. So teachers and professionals can enter. So Awesome. And that's all listed in the handbook right? This is all listed online in the handbook. Yes. Perfect. And since I'm at Urban Schools right now, we, this is a fabric store, so we see a ton of quilters in here. So let's talk a bit more about the quilt category, if you want to flip over okay. to that portion of your handbook. Um, right. So I know within, it's all under the Afghans, rugs, quilts, and bedspreads. Within there, there's different compartments, different categories you can enter. So we've got like, we've got hand quilted, machine quilted, applique, um, embroidered. And then you also have um, like, this is my first quilt, or you've got combination quilts. So like two people worked on this, multiple people worked on this. A group quilt or two person quilt. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. And, and uh, we also have a state fair theme quilt, not the theme of the year. It can be anything, okay. you know, it can be the Ferris wheel. It can be livestock. It can be Ferris wheel. It can okay. be, that's part of the Ferris wheel. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. 
And interestingly enough, because of popular demand, and um, uh, we, we've added a child division, a child category. So the kids age 12 and under can make a baby-sized quilt. Oh, great. And a baby-sized afghan or a small latrook rug or pillows. So, and that's because, you know, during this challenging year, we've had, uh, we've learned that sewing, quilting, and arts and crafts has, has had renewed interest. Absolutely. And a lot of people, as I hear that they've dusted off their second and third generation sewing machine, and they've started taking sewing lessons, and um, uh, some classes are full in all kinds of different areas, you know, and people are creating some fabulous things. So we're really excited. That's why we added the children's division. That's awesome. I think we, we have, have a question. Brenda Adams says she loves that building. I'm guessing she's talking about urban schools. And where can you get the handbook? Okay, so the handbook is all online. Where can we find it online? Okay, so there's two ways to uh, find the handbook. Uh, you can go directly. Well, no, that's the registration. Uh, you can go to bigtext.com, and up in the top is called Get Involved. Click on that. And then that will take you to uh, Creative Arts and the competition. And the handbook is there that you can click on. And so then you can either download it onto your own computer or print out what you're interested in. Or, um, or you can just check off what you want to enter. And then to register, you can go directly to creative.bigtext.com. And that's our new registration system. Perfect. Can, uh, register there. Yeah, and we'll remind people of that at the end of our little chat. Um, so let's go back to the quilts. Um, okay. One thing that I think a lot of quilters bemoan a little bit is the fact that the quilts have to be a minimum of 72 inches long. Why? <laughs> Why do you need them that big? <laughs> If you have ever been to the Creative Arts Building and seen them on display, they are displayed real high up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And to make them even all the way, yes, as even as possible all the way around, we ask that, the, that they be 72 inches in length, but they can be king size, queen size, full size, or twin size. Are you uh, saying that 72 inches is too long? For some people, it is because sometimes okay. you're making like a lap size quilt, a baby quilt. Is there any way to enter a smaller sized quilt into the fair? You know, I know that we've had that question before and I'm looking and I'm not seeing, but you know what? I will find out and get back with you on that. Okay. Um, I know that we have infants and toddler size. Okay, so that a baby so size quilt is applique, patchwork, embroidered combination. So, um, you know, I really need to find out uh, about that. Okay, and once we find that out, we can post that on our social media. So, no worries there. Yeah, and the thing of it is, is that not all of the quilts, if they do come in smaller, and then if they do win. Some of them that are uh, displayed into the showcases, ah, into the glass okay. showcases. So it's not a guarantee, but if you're 72 inches, pretty much you're going to go up on the wall. Okay. Awesome. And I saw there are, there are quilted wall hangings you can do. Right. You can enter into, there's a whole holiday corner category you can enter into where you can make a, a Christmas themed wall hanging and that can be entered into the Christmas category, not necessarily the general wall hanging category. So just some different ideas for quilters out there to be able to enter. Yeah. And there's, there's quite a few things in holiday corner that uh, would be of interest. So 
Yeah, there's a little something for everyone. Yeah, I think the uh, the pillow category is always a very popular category. Um, I think I've got a winner right here uh, for the, the Christmas holiday corner. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't. So big tip: don't go up against family members in the same category because it turns out your mom will beat you. And you'll get second place. So I did not bring my second place winner because uh, she brought her first place. Oh, there you go. So we're still fighting about that, but that's okay. And then also embroidery, handwork. There are a ton of different categories. So I've got this pillow right here that, you know, we did some embroidery on and this was a winner. So that was... That was neat. So just all, all different sorts of categories, you know, if you are yeah. a creative person. Yeah. And uh, in, in the child division on uh, Department H, they asked for us to add the child division in embroidery. Because oh, nice. Embroidery now. Isn't you know? that amazing? Mm -hmm. I love that idea. So to me, the uh, the Department H, that's the needlepoint, cruel, count, counted cross stitch. That right. Those categories, I always seem to enter my items into the wrong category. You know Just, what? It, there's a lot of things that can be entered in multiple categories. So if it doesn't work in one, we have our professionals that are there, our department heads, that can guide you and say, look, I think you should put this in a different category. So when you're entering it and bringing it in in mm -hmm. August, then uh, you have that choice of if they think you should be in a different category, it's your decision. But to switch the categories. And I think I always thought that that was really nice because they're like, well, this, you know, this may do better over here in this category. So as long as you've registered and you've paid your you know, registration fee, they will right. help guide you, which is yes, and then we'll switch cool. it in the office. We'll switch the category in the office. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the department I needlework and sewing. Uh, so we've got handbags, we've got tote bags, we've got garments. There's, I mean, children's apparel computerized applique, computerized embroidery. There are a ton of different categories in here. And you can see behind me, we've got some different bags, laptop case. Um, so the possibilities are endless of what we you can enter. We teachers and professionals in that category this year under crochet, any, knitting, any, and sewing machine article, any. We also added the child division. Mm. of accessories, the tote, the purse, the sewing machine work, stuffed animal, and pillow. Yeah, That's I think we've got a stuffed, a little dude right back there, a stuffed guy. That so. looks like our strong man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So really cool. There's just a ton of different categories. So like I said, you can pretty much find any category to enter into. Right, exactly. There are so many different things that you can do. So when I'm when I enter into the fair, what are judges looking for when they look at the different items that they have? You know, how how can I win, you know, ribbons? Because that's okay. what we want. We want the ribbons. That's a tricky question. Of course they're looking for the best of those that are entered. Okay, yep. so um, and it depends on what the category is. And we try to use professionals as judges. Okay. You know, so like I was telling you before, sometimes in the quilting, they come with their magnifying glasses wow. and they look at the stitching. So, um, they're, they're obviously more lenient with juniors and children because we want to encourage kids to continue on with this. Um, but each department is different. Do the best you can is, is what we usually say. Right, right. And we were talking you're about, amateurs. You're you, amateurs. Know, you know, my favorite color is purple. And so I made a purple quilt. You know, what if, what if a judge doesn't like purple? You know, is that, well, you know, does that happen? 
that's not acceptable and it wouldn't be acceptable because we are right there and they you know we've never had that happen but should it happen we'd say you can't take that into consideration good awesome so yeah. any kind of style you know if you're doing a good job you, you can win which is great absolutely absolutely awesome and then um do is it blind judging you know is it what? Do, is it blind judging? Do they know who made what? Absolutely. They do not know who made what. When After your item is turned in, you become a number. Okay. So they don't see your name. And uh, the only time that your name is going to be on there is if you win, then obviously you have some right. ribbons behind you. Right. You've got the... Uh, right with the name, exactly. Your name is on it for display, <laughs> but uh, everything is blind judging, so awesome. they don't know who did it. And <clears throat> let's say your mother is judging. <laughs> if you entered something, she could not judge your items. Ah, okay. If, you know, if it might be inevitable that somebody might say, "Oh, I want my daughter to win." You know? Right. Right. No rigged uh, judges. <laughs> right. And we use a lot of judges. We, How many? We, we try, well, including in the cooking categories, we lump them all together. Um, in 2019, I believe we used 440 judges. Wow. But it includes a lot of chefs for the cooking contest during the fair. And then pre-fair... We have certain departments that have more entries than other departments. So, and like I was telling you that um, photography is our largest category. Uh, in 2019, I believe we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,700 entries. Wow. So we, have, so we can have three or four days of judging and we don't always have the same judges for those three or four days. Now, canning is huge for us. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really think last year we had like 1,100. Right. That entries. category, I mean, apple, pear, lemon, <laughs> lime, it jalapeno, it keeps going. I can't imagine taste testing all of those different jams and jellies. Well, we have panels of chefs that come in or people in the food industry that come in and, and judge. And, um, the vegetables are not, maybe it's not all vegetables, but if it's a, a canned carrots, they're not judged. It's by look only. And so they're in a larger um, jar. So, And I does it say think, that in the... <laughs> well, yeah, because it says one jar for those. Yes. And the others, you, you bring in two jars. So one is tasted and then... Uh, what's left of that jar is thrown out, mm -hmm. and the other jar is used for uh, uh, display. Right, right, because you've got that whole wall of jars in there, right, exactly. which is a pretty exactly. cool-looking wall right there. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Do you have a favorite category? Oh, department. I have okay. I have favorite departments. Yes. I love designer craftsmen. What does that designer, mean? Designer craftsmen is a little bit of everything and it's extremely creative. So you might find welded items. You might find um, uh, uh, assemblages. In other words, uh, pictures that are put together with odds and ends and, and whatnot. Uh, you might find, I'm trying to turn to it now. There's just so many different categories, fused glass, there's stained glass, scrapbooking, mosaic tile, jewelry, um, sculpturing. So a little bit of everything. We have teachers and professionals and we have juniors as well. And we added quite a few in the child division because we have a lot of children that enter this kind of stuff. Bird houses, bird feeders, recycled mm -hmm. items. 
So I love this category because it's so diverse. Um, and I also love candy. So, and then, so see, I don't have a real favorite. I love quilting. Well, yay. (laughs) Not just because because we're talking. (laughs) No, because I do. We spend hours after they're all up walking around, just looking at them. I mean, they're so beautiful. I'm always amazed every year that so many people are quilting and they just spend hours putting together these fabulous quilts. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a long process. So it's, it's really exciting to a lot of people when, you know, their, their quilt gets chosen, you know, to right. hang at the fair, even if it's an honorable mention, you know, you're still like, yes, you know, I, I did it. It's going to be up there and a ton of people are going to be seeing it, which is. And you know, during this uh, uh, challenging year, I expect to see a lot more quilts than we've had before. I, I could be wrong, but I think people are quilting. I, I think you're right. I think a ton of people are quilting. I think we've got a lot of new quilters. So you may have a lot in the uh, My First Quilt category. So that's great. watch out there, uh, which is going to be, that's going to be really cool. I kind of wish, um, you know, I'd love to see everything that's entered. You know, we only get to see the winners, but I think it would be fun just to kind of like peek it's- around and see everything. When we get so many, it's really difficult to not give everyone something. It's yeah. so hard. Yeah, I'm sure that's the we hardest. Do some, we do have some rules and in quilting. Okay, perfect. I'm not going to talk about the 72 inch long uh, requirement, <laughs> but um, no embroidered or whole cloth, if you know what I mean, quilts that are made from a pre stamp kit. Okay. We don't allow that. We don't allow tie quilts or coverlets. Okay. Um, that is pretty much it in the quilting area. Um, and all of the rules are in the handbook. They're all at the front. Um, the handbook is really, really easy to read. There's a lot of information in there. So it you feel like you can get overwhelmed, but it's actually really easy. Um, to figure out, right. you know, what you need to do. And the individual department rules are in at the top of each individual part, department where it's uh, listed. So, right. And you know what? We're always available to answer questions. Yeah. People can call, people can email, and we'll answer anything that, um, any questions you may have or help help people as much as we can. Awesome. That's really helpful. Now, a lot of people don't know where to enter an item. So we yeah. take that into consideration. And sometimes we ask them to email us a picture and then we can decide where mm-hmm. it should go. Yeah, I know. Like I said, I've entered some stuff wrong into the needlework category. And when I got there, they said, oh, you should put it in here. And said, okay, I wasn't sure where to enter it. Right. So exactly. say, say you or your friends have items in the fair when you get into the creative arts building like you said you've got a hundred different glass cases how can i find you know my friend's items quickly without looking at every case even though i am going to look at every case okay if you enter the creative arts department uh from the breezeway that's connected to the embarcadero If you come in there and you turn right, and it's right across from the butter sculpture, there's an information desk. That is also where we sell our cookbook. But we um, we have two different books, so we can you come up to us and you want to find somebody by their last name, and we have them listed alphabetically. We can find and we can tell you exactly where those what showcase number that those items are in. Can show you a map where it's located or if like if if you come in and say there's there's a lady named chelsea who entered quilting and i don't know her last name but she won first place i want i want to see that quilt. so we can enter we can look at it by department and we already have them listed first second third you know and uh-huh. we can find that item and we can say this is where 
where it is. And we can show them on the map. Got it. So like, say if I entered into Christmas pillows and I got second place, I can go up to the information desk and find out who won first place in the Christmas yes. pillow category. So I can go look at it and find out why they won first place. Mom. Yeah. Well, you... <laughs> so mom got first place, but daughter got second place. Right. I, I think I'm right. <laughs> but you know I'm what? Kidding. They're, not, they're not necessarily displayed together either. Because right. we, we decorate what we call museum style. So with all the decorators that we have, they're assigned certain showcases. They can decide if they want to have an all red showcase or if they want it themed uh, with uh, big text or, or something like that. Right. I've so, seen like safari theme where it's all these yeah. animals like photography, paintings, you know, a wall hanging. It's really interesting the way that you guys display it. I've seen a crocheted scarf as the river of you know a, a sculpture you know and it's it's just so neat how you guys display everything it's it's really interesting and really well put together yeah yeah we we try to make it a visual picture you know that's really pleasing to the eyes so. right yeah and each case is different which right, i think is exactly. really really interesting so exactly kathy remind us again where can we find all of this information online? Okay, two ways. You can go to bigtext.com and up at the top, that's our website, up at the top is Get Involved. Click on that and that will take you to Creative Arts. And there you can find anything that you want. Uh, the registration, um, the handbook, uh, that kind of thing. Or if you just already know what you want to register and today you just want to go right into the registration, you go to creative.bigtext.com and you'll go directly to the registration area, the Perfect. registration system. And we will walk you through it. <laughs> and when do, if I want to enter into the pre-fair contest, say I want to enter a quilt, what's my deadline? When do I need to enter by? You need to have, you need to be finished registering by July 26th. Okay. July 26th, okay. 2021. 2021. And then you need to bring your items in August the 6th, 7th, or 8th. That's a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Mm -hmm. And bring them in. Now, there are people, believe it or not, that live in different states. They used to live in Texas, and they send their items, they mail their items in every year. Okay. So if you're going to mail your items in, then you do need to uh, still have them sent in by July 26th. Okay, perfect. And we prefer to have to receive them before, by July 26th. Right. So we, we have the capability, you know, of storing your items we lock them in showcases. So, you know, as soon as you finish, if you live far away, you can send them in. Got it. Okay, so that's July 26th, right? July 26th. And all of the items have to have been completed within the past two years. Since uh, 2019. Got it. And each department will mention the, the time at the top. I believe, yes. So this is Department J, the quilts. It says, entries must have been completed by the contestant within the last two years since 2019. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Kathy, thanks so much for all of the information. And I know you mentioned it. You are available by phone by email. If anybody who is trying to enter or has any questions, they can reach out to you. I know I've reached out to you before and very prompt reply, very helpful. Um, so don't hesitate to enter in, into any category. It's a ton of fun. I've entered a lot of items um, and it's just so fun to see, you know, all of the creative things that people 
out there are making. Yeah, let me say uh, that uh, if they have questions, they can email at creativearts.com. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You can find it on the website, too. Just search State Fair of Texas. (laughs) And we have a phone number, so... uh, Feel free to contact us. Perfect. We're always and I know a lot of the people who work at urban schools have also entered. So those of you who frequent urban schools, um, even if you don't frequent urban schools, you should come on over. They can answer your questions. Um, they love the state fair here, which is really great. Can I so, ask the question? Yeah. What kind of classes does urban schools offer? A bit of everything. Of course, we've got quilting classes. We've got a lot of intro classes, intro into sewing, into serger, into hand embroidery, machine embroidery, quilting, garments. And then we've got, you know, bag classes, just expanding your skills. Um, And a lot of times it's, you know, even though sometimes I don't need to take a class, you know, I can, I could follow this pattern and make it. Sometimes it's really nice to go to a class you know, right. to socialize and to also, you know, just have somebody kind of hold your hand as you're going through the pattern. So, you know, I mentioned the information booth, and one of the top questions that we have every year is so I have these quilt tops that I inherited, and I don't know where to go to get them quilted. Urban and schools. It, <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you. Yep, yep. They offer long arm services. They've got a ton of fabric, a lot of notions, and some really great classes. And you can find it all on their website, um, urbanschools.com. So go check it out. And then also go check out the State Fair Creative Arts Department. Um, you can get those ribbons. It is possible. And it's just a ton of fun. So, and yeah, I, I did make a mistake on the on the uh, email address. It's creativearts at bigtext.com. Creativearts at bigtext.com. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kathy. We appreciate it. Look forward to seeing all of you and reuniting with our fair friends. Yeah, yeah. We missed it last year. We're happy it's back. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.